Welcome. In this video, we will going to see some of the important numerical problem related to diffraction of light. This problem will be based on single slit, double slit, grating, resolving power and so on. Let's begin. Very first question. The diffraction pattern due to double slit experiment with two identical slits are recorded in infrared radiation of wavelength 1.2 micrometer on a special photographic plate at a distance 1.8 meter from the center of slit. A photograph of observed diffraction pattern is given below. Calculate the distance between the slit. Okay. This problem is based upon double slit diffraction pattern. Let's understand what is given. Wavelength of radiation 1.2 micrometer. Distance between slit and screen 1.8 meter. Diffraction pattern is given here. Here photographic plate is given. That means diffraction pattern is given. So let's try to extract some of the information from this diffraction pattern. The very first information which we can get from here, linear width of central maxima that is indicated by this double sided arrow 0 0.6 centimeter. This is the first minima on the right hand side. This is the first minima on the left hand side. So distance between them is linear width of central maxima, right? That's a 0 0.6 centimeter. There is another information which we can extract it from here. Just take the central maxima. Okay. So this is the central maxima here. And if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7th one is missing. That is 7th order of interference maxima is missing. So here we can get a information about the missing order for the first order of diffraction minima 7th order of the interference maxima is missing that is we can write m equals to 1 p is equals to 7 and missing order is 7 so these are the information given and i have to calculate the distance between the slit okay just think about a relation which relates the unknown variable with the known variable so we can easily write it down for a missing order, we know a plus b by a is equals to p upon m. So just substitute the value of p and m, we can get b is equals to 6a, which we have to find out. Now, in order to find b, we must know a. To find out a, we will take the help of another given quantity, that is the linear width of central maxima, right? So what is the condition for diffraction minima? Diffraction minima is a sine theta is equals to lambda. And if theta is much much smaller than 1, then sine theta will be approximately theta. Therefore, we can write theta is equal to lambda by a. This is the angular position of the diffraction minima. If you multiply it by 2, then we can get the angular width of the principal maxima, right? So, from the center, theta towards the right and theta towards left. So, overall angular width of the principal maxima is 2 theta and 2 theta is 2 lambda by a. This is the angular separation. The linear separation will be angular separation multiplied by the distance between slit and screen that is d. So d times 2 lambda by a is the linear width. We know the linear width. We know d. We know lambda. We can calculate a. Right. Or we can just replace a by using this relation a is equals to b upon 6. So if you substitute everything you can easily solve out B. B will be 4.32 millimeter. Okay. Now move to second problem. A parallel beam of light of wavelength 500 nanometer is incident normally on narrow slit of width 0.2 nanometer. The front of a diffraction is observed on a screen which is placed at focal plane of a convex lens in bracket placed very close to slit. There is importance about this word placed very close to slit. Due to this assumption, we can take the focal length of convex lens as a distance between slit and screen. Okay. Focal length is given 20 cm. Calculate the width of central maxima and also the distance between first to minima. To do that, let's work it out. What is given? Slit width, which is 0 0.2 nanometer. Wavelength, focal length of the lens. Okay. We have to find out the width of central maxima. And distance between first to minima. Okay. In the previous problem, we have just done it width of the central maxima, which is twice of the angular position of first minima. 
let's see in the intensity diagram we have to find out this distance which is indicated by this black double sided arrow this is the width of the principal maxima and this red arrow indicating the distance between first two minima okay so if you know the angular position of that is a theta for the first diffraction minima then twice of the theta that is theta towards right and theta towards left that is equals to 2 theta and 2 theta will be the angular separation and we need linear separation okay we need the linear width this is the condition for diffraction minima and here order is m equals to 1 so if you use again the same assumption that is theta is very small then sin theta is approximately equals to theta therefore angular position of first minima will be lambda by a so the angular width of principal maxima will be 2 theta just substitute it here and you can get the angular separation and multiply the angular separation with the distance between slit and screen and as i said that convex lens is placed very close to slit therefore the focal length of that convex lens will be treated as the distance between slit and screen f times 2 theta if you work it out it will turns out to be 1 millimeter therefore the linear width of the principal maxima is 1 millimeter and to find out the second answer that is the distance between or separation between first to minima for the second minima we can write m equals to 2 therefore theta 2 that is the angular position of second minima is 2 lambda by a therefore the angular separation between first minima and second minima is theta 2 minus theta 1 if you just substitute it here you will get the angular separation and then multiply with the focal length and you can get the linear separation that is distance between first to minima just substitute everything theta 2 theta 1 f and you will work it out and it will turns out to be 0.5 millimeter the linear width of principal maxima is 1 millimeter and linear distance between first two minima is 0.5 millimeter okay now move to third problem if a diffraction grating produces a first order maxima for shortest wavelength of visible light at 30 degree at what angle will be the first order maxima for longest wavelength of visible light it is very easy problem it is related to grating let's work it out what is given angle of diffraction for shortest wavelength shortest wavelength longest wavelength order and i have to find out the angle of diffraction for longest wavelength okay now we know condition for maxima a plus b sine theta is equals to m lambda for the first order m is equals to 1 and for the shortest wavelength that is for lambda 1 we can write a plus b sine theta 1 equals to lambda 1 similarly for the lambda 2 a plus b sine theta 2 equals to lambda 2 if you divide equation 1 by equation 2 you can get sine theta 1 upon sine theta 2 is equals to lambda 1 upon lambda 2 now it's very easy problem we have lambda 1 we have lambda 2 we have theta 1 just work out for theta 2 and if you work it out it will turns out to be sine theta 2 equals to 65 upon 80 therefore theta will be approximately equals to 54.34 degree okay this problem was very easy now let's move to another problem helium light of wavelength 504.8 nanometer and 501 nanometer are made incident normally on a grating having 600 line per millimeter calculate angular dispersion of this line in the second order of spectrum okay how we can do it we have to find out the angular dispersion if we can find out the position of second order for the two wavelength that is angular position and if we take the difference of that that is actually the angular dispersion angular dispersion is d theta okay so given lambda 1 lambda 2 and number of lines which we can write as 1 upon a plus b is 600 per millimeter okay and i have to find out the angular dispersion and here the order is given to so for the second order maxima we can write a plus b sine theta is equals to 2 lambda if we use this relation then for the lambda one we can calculate the theta one okay so sine theta is equals to 2 lambda upon a plus b and 1 upon a plus b is n therefore sine theta one equals to 2 n lambda one just substitute all the values and if you work it out 
theta 1 will be 37.28 degree. Similarly, if you work it out for the lambda 2, that is the wavelength of 501 nanometer, use same relation, try to solve it out and you will get theta 2 equals to 36.955. So this is angular position of second order maxima for lambda 2. Therefore, the angular dispersion is difference between these two. Therefore, theta 1 minus theta 2 that is delta theta is angular dispersion which is equals to 0 0.328 degrees. Okay. Let's move to next problem. Problem number 5. Find the least number of line that a diffraction grating would need in order to resolve in the first order the red doublet given by mixture of hydrogen and deuterium the wavelength difference is 0 0.1 nanometer and mean wavelength is 656.3 nanometer as highlighted by red ink this problem is related to resolving power of a diffraction grating and this is very straightforward even it's written hydrogen deuterium you don't have to think about it it's very straightforward problem we have seen the resolving power of a grating in our one of the lecture which we have to use here here given difference in the wavelength mean wavelength and i have to find out the number of slit right number of slit is represented by n or i can write is one upon a plus b what is resolving power of a grating we know resolving power of a grating is lambda upon d lambda which is also given by m times n where m is the order of diffraction and n is the number of slip right just substitute it here and solve it it's very straightforward m equals to 1 lambda is given d lambda is given it's very straightforward n is equals to 3647 per millimeter okay so number of lines should be 3647 per millimeter okay now let's move to last problem this problem is related to resolving power of a circular aperture okay, or a telescope. Two stars situated at a distance of 9.5 into 10 to the 12 km from a telescope of diameter 20 cm are sending light of wavelength 600 nanometer. Find the distance of separation of a star for which they are just resolved. This problem is related to resolving power of a circular aperture. We have covered that topic too in our lecture series. Here given distance between star and telescope, wavelength of light, diameter of the telescope and I have to find out the separation between the star. Let's try to understand this problem from a cartoon diagram. We have a two star here, one and two and here we have a telescope. Okay, And let's suppose we are looking these two star with the help of this telescope and the distance of telescope from the star is given d. And let's say the angular separation between them is theta and I have to find out this L. Okay. So in order to resolve these two star that is a telescope or a man should say that okay there is not a single star there is a two star there must be limitation on this theta means how small this theta can be in order to resolve this. Okay. Minimum angular separation between two star must be equals to limiting value of theta otherwise we cannot resolve it and that limiting value of theta is given by 1.22 lambda upon d right so if this is the limiting value of theta we can work out then we can multiply that theta with the linear separation between a star and telescope we can get the linear separation between the stars okay so just work out given are this limiting theta is 1.22 lambda upon d Substitute the value and you can get theta equals to 3.66 into 10 to the power minus 6 radian. Okay. Therefore, linear separation is theta times d. Substitute the value and you can get L is equals to 3.44 into 10 to the power 7 kilometer. If the distance between those two stars is less than this, we won't be able to say that there are two stars. Okay. Because telescope won't be able to resolve them and we will see just a single star okay this is the limiting linear separation between them and look how huge is this number okay i try to cover different types of problems see you in the next part thank you